Thank you for your interest in Medicare cost reporting. You have accessed part four in a four part webinar series discussing Medicare cost reporting for critical access hospitals. These webinars are designed for individuals who may not be familiar with the Medicare cost report and are hoping to learn more about it. For additional information, please access parts one, two, and three of the cost report webinar series as well as other focused educational webinars sponsored by the Wisconsin Office of Rural Health. Today's webinar will discuss Worksheet C series, the D series, and E series of the Medicare Cost Report. In the first three parts of the cost reporting series, we discussed general information and the patient statistics included on the S series. We discussed the allowable expenses reported on the Worksheet A series, an allocation of those expenses on the B series. Now it is time to focus our attention on revenues and we will start on Worksheet C. Worksheet C part one of the Medicare cost report is where we report our gross patient service revenue and calculate the cost to charge ratios by department for the organization. The key concept when reviewing and preparing Worksheet C is to match our revenues and our expenses. You will notice on the first five columns of Worksheet C Part 1 relate to costs. These costs are directly pulled over in the cost report from Worksheet B Part 1 Column 26 and are reflect all the costs by the specific cost centers. Columns 6 and 7 are where the hospital will enter all inpatient and outpatient service revenue and must exclude any revenue billed for professional services. If you remember on the Worksheet A webinar series, we removed all professional expenses on A82. Now here on the Worksheet C, we must exclude the revenue associated to those professional services as well. That will be listed as a reconciling item when you reconcile the total in column eight reported in the cost report back to your internal or audited financial statements. To complete columns six and seven, we recommend the organization generate a revenue and usage report to assign the revenue by revenue code to the specific cost centers. Please note that some revenue codes may be split between more than one cost center. Remember to match your revenue and your expenses. So for example, if you have supply revenue and supply expense, your supply expenses, if they are all coded to line 71 on Worksheet A, all the revenue associated to those supplies should be reflected on line 71 on Worksheet C. However, if the supply costs and drug costs are reflected in various lines within Worksheet A, you likewise need to report the revenues associated to those expenses within the various lines on Worksheet C. Sometimes you will have to split a revenue code in order to match your revenue and your expenses. A couple of things to note when reviewing your Worksheet C is to evaluate the cost to charge ratios reflected in column nine. We recommend that you compare these ratios back to the prior year filed cost report for comparability. A cost to charge ratio of greater than 1.0 means that your costs have exceeded your charges. Cost to charge ratios greater than one and changes in your cost to charge ratios greater than 10% compared to the prior year may be questioned by your Medicare auditor, and we recommend that you be prepared and have a comment ready to explain the change in your cost to charge ratios from your current reporting period compared to your prior year. After completing Worksheet C, it is now time to complete the Worksheet D series where we will report the Medicare charges. Worksheet C included all charges for all payers except for any professional revenue. Worksheet D will now reflect only the traditional Medicare charges to reflect and calculate a Medicare cost. 
that will ultimately be used to determine your settlement on your cost report. Utilizing the cost to charge ratios from worksheet C by department multiplied by your Medicare charges will ultimately determine your estimate of the Medicare cost of those services. To complete your worksheet D series, we recommend that you utilize a provider statistical reimbursement report from Medicare also known as a PSNR report. The PSNR report will include information such as patient days, charges, payments, and other processed claim information. Grouping your PSNR report by revenue code to match the cost centers where the revenue and expenses were reflected on Worksheet A and Worksheet C is the best method to use when completing your D series. Go back to the example that I just shared previously with supply and drug expenses and where the revenues are reported on Worksheet C. When you look at your PSNR report, you will want to assign the revenue codes the same way you assign the revenue codes on Worksheet C so that you're reflecting your revenue in the same line item as where it is reflected on Worksheet C and where the costs are reflected on Worksheet A. A couple of tips when running your PSNR report. We recommend that you attempt to run the reports well in advance of filing your cost report. Please note that passwords in the online PSNR system expire every 60 days. We suggest when generating the PSNR report, you use a paid through date that is as close as possible to the date that you plan to file your cost report. The Medicare PSNR reports are utilized in multiple areas throughout your cost report. The next two slides provide you with some information as to where PSNR information is utilized in your cost report. On S3, we utilize the patient statistics from report types 110, 118, and 180 to complete your patient stats on S3. D-3 and D part five are where we utilize the PSNR reports 110, 210, 180, and 850 to reflect the charges for the Medicare program for the reporting period covered by the cost report. On the E series, we will report the net reimbursement reflected from the PSNR reports as you see listed on this slide on E-1. It's not noted on this slide, but in addition, we will utilize the coinsurance and deductibles listed on the PSNR reports 110, 850, and 180 on your E-3 series or E part B series of the Medicare cost report as well to ultimately compute your cost report settlement. We will not cover the M series or H series as part of this webinar series, but you also can utilize the PSNR report to complete portions of those worksheets as well. Now a little bit more information on your worksheet E series of the Medicare cost report. This series is where you will ultimately determine the Medicare settlement for your inpatient, outpatient, if you have a swing bed program, a skilled nursing facility, they will all be reflected within your E-series of the Medicare cost report. Taking the cost to charge ratios from worksheet C by the Medicare charges reflected in your D-series will ultimately compute to 101% of the cost to the Medicare program for your routine and ancillary services. And then it will subtract coinsurance and deductibles. These amounts will come from the PSNR reports as previously mentioned, plus any Medicare bad debts that the organization determines on a bad debt log that needs to be supplied when you file the cost report. The Medicare program will calculate the sequestration adjustment, which is 2% of the net of these lines above, ultimately to determine your total Medicare reimbursement cost. This will then be subtracted by any payments received. It says CE-1, this will come from your PSNR reports, as just previously mentioned a couple slides ago, as well as 
any lump sum adjustments that have been received or subtracting any lump sum adjustments that have been paid by the organization to Medicare during the cost reporting period to ultimately come up with your Medicare settlement on the cost report. We have a couple of slides of information regarding Medicare bad debts. A Medicare bad debt is allowable if it pertains to an uncollectible Medicare coinsurance or deductible amount. Please note that this cannot include any physician professional services and cannot include any Medicare HMO beneficiaries. In order to claim a bad debt as allowable on the cost report, unless the patient has been determined to be indigent, the organization needs to be able to document that the write-off did not occur within 120 days after first billing to the beneficiary. Collection efforts also need to be documented for these individuals that a collection effort was made to collect this balance. And those efforts need to be consistent with all of your other payer types. We recommend that you refer back to your financial assistance and collection policy. Any recoveries of a bad debt that was claimed in a prior period does need to be offset against the claims being submitted for the current year. Bad debts that do not need to be have documented the collection effort happen in three instances. The first one is if it is a Medicare Medicaid crossover claim. What does need to be documented and show proof of is that in order to claim this as an allowable bad debt, when Medicaid is the secondary insurance, the claim must be billed to the state even if you know it will not be paid. The second is if it is an indigent patient and you must provide support for proof of indigency. And lastly, if you have a bankruptcy patient, you must provide support of the bankruptcy. This slide provides you with the documentation that is required to support the claims that are included within your Medicare cost report for allowable bad debts. Please note at the bottom, you must submit an electronic listing of bad debts that includes the patient name, the Medicare number, the data service, indigency, the write-off date, and the amount of the write-off. Please note that we recommend that you have all of these other pieces of documentation readily available upon question by your Medicare auditor. Lastly, there was some recent information that was shared in 2019 regarding how Medicare Medicaid crossover bad debts should be reflected in your trial balance in order for them to be allowable by the Medicare auditor. Effective for cost report periods beginning on or after October 1st of 2019, the organization should not include Medicare and Medicaid crossover claims within a contractual allowance account but rather should be reflected in a bad debt expense account. So we recommend that you do not write these off to a contractual account, but rather charge them to an expense account. Consider calling it bad debt expense and report this expense account within the bad debt line on worksheet G2 of your Medicare cost report. Please note that while CMS has provided some clarification as to where this should be reported for cost report purposes, organizations that are nonprofit or have debt um, that require a audit under generally accepted accounting principles may see a difference in recognition of these expenses from a gap perspective for audit purposes and financial reporting purposes compared to how they are presented for CMS and cost report purposes. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you for listening to today's webinar.